Welcome back to the Aubergine Chef. Now today we're going to make a dough called 1-2-3 dough, which is basically a very simple, reliable shortbread dough that we can use to make um, basically any kind of cutout we really want. But I'm going to show you how to do um, hearts for Valentine's Day and snowflakes for winter. I like to do snowflakes and throwing them in. So it's going to be a lot of things to cramming, so I want to throw in a lot of decorating techniques. I figure if I'm going to do one, I might as well do them all. So what we're going to do is we're going to do sandwich cookies, so you can have like the see-through top. We're also going to do those stained glass or window pane um, cookies that are made with the candy, also with the see-through middle. It is not really a sandwich cookie. We're going to do just regular cookies iced, and I'm going to do them with two different ways. I'm going to do royal icing, and I'm going to do American buttercream, American grease cream, um, and I'll get more into that later. Um, I'm going to try and decorate them using a variety of piping techniques. I'm going to try and do scroll work with my raw icing. I don't have a lot of practice with that because that's more of a wedding cake technique and really, really ornate cookies. But I do want to show you that you can do that with raw icing and that it's not impossible. You just need to practice and get the hang of it. I'm, I haven't really practiced enough that I feel comfortable doing it, but at least I can show you what, you're, what you can do, what Royal Icing is capable of doing, and that it's not really as difficult as it looks, as long as you just practice. It would be really great if you could find um, a template online, and I'll try to do that for my website too. I'll try to find some templates online and try to um, maybe draw them so that way that they're more suited for the cookies that we're going to be doing, and then have them uploaded online onto my website as a downloadable that you can print out, like a PDF file, like the recipes. Um, we're also going to be using basic techniques. We're going to do shell borders, reverse shell borders. Um, I'll show you how to pipe, you know, conversation hearts, very easy techniques. Um, and of course, sprinkles and dragees. And we'll go on to, we'll get into that more a little bit later uh, about those. Um, snowflakes, we're going to do uh, white and light blue. And then the hearts, we're going to do mostly white and pink with a little bit of red. Um, I might do some red hearts, but I really don't want to like, I don't like piping with red because um, it's red is such a strong color that I think that red as a base looks nice, and then pipe with white or pink around the rim looks nice, but white with a red piping around the edge sometimes is a little strong. Plus, the red can kind of bleed into the white, so you don't want to go too, too much with the red, especially if it's a deep, deep red. Because if you know, as ba most bakers do, that red is a very difficult color to get. Red, black, navy, blue, they're very difficult, difficult colors to get because they're so dark, um, and you need a lot of food coloring to get it. So anyway, why don't we go ahead and get started. Um, so I've already weighed out my ingredients. Um, now one, two, three dough gets its name because it's a ratio. It's one part flour, or uh, sorry, one part sugar to two parts butter to three parts flour. So one, two, three. Now that only works with weights. You can't do that with cups or anything like that because cups and cup, a cup of sugar doesn't weigh the same as a cup of flour. So it has to be in ounces. And um, for every, basically for every pound of flour, you're going to add uh, one egg. Now, it gets a little sticky with the one pound, eight ounces, or eight ounces ratios of flour, because then you won't have to use half an egg, but I kind of just cheat and really don't try. I just put the rest of the egg in. So if I, like today we're going to do one pound, eight ounces of flour, I'm just going to put two, out, two eggs in as opposed, to, um, as opposed to one and a half. Just makes it easier that way. So you make sure, make sure that you're... Excuse me. So make sure that your butter is um, softened to room temperature. And let me go ahead and uh, list off the ingredient amounts. We have one pound eight ounces of flour, all-purpose flour. One pound of butter, unsalted, softened to room temperature. And eight ounces of granulated sugar and two eggs, which comes out to be about four ounces. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to do a very basic creaming method, and then we're going to roll it out and cut it out, bake it, and decorate it. Doesn't sound like a lot of work, but hopefully it won't be. Okay, so the first step to the creaming method is you want to cream together your fat and your sugar components, so our butter and our sugar. Okay, let's go ahead and get that mashed up a little bit. Then we'll add our 8 ounces of sugar. Go ahead and cream them together until it's light and fluffy. Okay, now that our butter is all creamed, our butter and sugar is creamed, we're going to go ahead and slowly add in our eggs. Normally you would add them one at a time. Now my eggs, I also have a little bit of vanilla extract, about two teaspoons, um, so this cookie has a little bit of flavor on its own. 
We're gonna go ahead and add it a little bit at a time until it's absorbed by the eggs, I mean by the butter. Okay, after you scrape down your bowl, go ahead and mix it again. Once you've mixed it again, now we can add our flour. We're just gonna add it in all at once. Let's go ahead. Okay, start on a slow speed so you don't kick up your flour everywhere. Okay, pick up the speeds in about medium. Okay, after you've mixed your dough for about a good two to three minutes, you can go ahead and take it off the mixer and put it onto your floured surface for rolling out. Okay, so go ahead and roll your dough. You can roll it straight from the mixer, but if you notice it's really soft and you're having a hard time manipulating it and moving it to the um, sheet pan, you can refrigerate it a little bit to help stiffen it up and then it will be easier to roll out and to transfer. Okay, you want your cookies fairly thick, so a quarter of an inch should be about as thin as you want to go. Um, you can go as thin as an eighth of an inch, but it might be a little bit harder to manipulate them that way and move them around. So this dough is still fairly soft because I didn't refrigerate it because I wanted to hurry up and get to the baking and decorating step. But I'm going to go ahead and try and cut them out and see how they work. I, all, I have my dough sitting in the, in the refrigerator, um, uh, stiff, stiffening I guess, getting, getting stiffer. Um, uh, but make sure when you do that that you have it in the uh, little puck shape that you want to roll it out in. So that way it's just easier than trying to have to cut it out and then roll it up and then smush it, smush it down. So when you take out the mixer, ball it up into little balls and then squish it down until it's like a disc and then refrigerate it so that way it's ready to go. Okay, so I'm going to cut out a variety of shapes or a variety of sizes of hearts. Um, I'm mostly going to do a, a, a medium size. Okay, so for the window pane cookies and for the sandwich cookies, what you want to do is you want to cut another smaller heart inside one of the bigger hearts. So that way you can see through. So like this would be the bottom for the sandwich cookie and that would be the top. Okay. So as you can see, there's some of them are a little distorted because of the, um, the softness of the dough. So the stiffer doughs will come out a little bit better. These might have a little bit of fingerprints or dent indentations on them, but at least you get the idea of where I'm, where I'm going with this. So um, it might be a better idea to go ahead and refrigerate your dough as opposed to cutting it straight off the mixer. Okay, so here I have some uh, crushed up Jolly Ranchers, which is what we're going to use for our window pane cookies. And um, all you have to do is take your Jolly Ranchers, put them in a little plastic bag on top of a cutting board, and then smash them using either a rolling pin or a, a meat tenderizer or a mallet or whatever. You don't really need a lot of strength. You just need to break them up into somewhat small pieces. You don't have to pulverize it into dust, but just good-sized chunks. And uh, I like to separate them in color so that way I can um, pick what colors I want to do because like, for a lot of the hearts I'll usually stick with the red and pink but I might want to do a, a, a mixture of colors. So to do the window pane cookies you don't need a lot. You just put the Jolly Ranchers right in there and you don't have to use Jolly Ranchers. Um, you can use any kind of hard candy you can find. Um, the, a rock candy for example would be a good example, uh, a good other alternative. And so for a tie-dye effect, or a more stained glass look, you want to put in all the different colors you can, and especially if you lump it in one place and another place, that way it gets a more prominent look to it. And what's going to happen is in the oven, they're going to melt, 
and they're going to create this stained glass look. Okay, so for these size cookies, normally you want to keep cookies of the same size on the same tray. You don't want to have all these little ones because these will bake faster. But knowing that, just keep that in mind that you might have to go back and forth in, um, in and out of the oven to make sure you get them before they burn. Um, but normally you do want to try and keep them all the same shape. Like you'd probably bake all the ones with the holes in it on a separate tray and all the ones that are solid on a separate tray and all the smaller ones on a separate tray. Just because they'll bake at different times and you don't want to be in a situation where some of your cookies are done and some of them aren't. But I have a little bit of practice doing that so I, can, I, know, where I'm, I know where I'm going I know when they're going to be done. Now I don't have a specific time on these but in general you want to bake these at 350, 325 to 350. Um, and they should bake within eight minutes or so. Um, you'll know when they're done when they're starting to turn golden around the edges. Okay, there is one more thing I wanted to show you before I uh, cut the scene and then cut all the cookies while you guys are able to see the magic of TV and YouTube straight to the next scene of decorating. Um, I, so if you wanted to do uh, those lollipop cookies that some people are very, that, you know, are very excited about, especially kids, just go ahead and take um, a lollipop stick, kind of press it into the dough, and then the best way we found at this, one of the grocery stores I worked at, or the grocery store I worked at, was we just layered it with another cookie on top. So you've got double the amount of cookies, so you, um, you don't want to bake these on the same sheet pan as if you would just had one, or, or just a single cookie, like the ones we just put in the oven, because these will definitely bake for a longer period of time. But it's not as difficult as some people think. It's actually pretty easy to do. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and finish cutting my cookies. And um, don't forget I'm doing snowflakes too, so don't be surprised when you see snowflakes show up. Um, and when we come back, we'll be done, cooled, and we'll be ready to bake, uh, decorate. Actually, we'll probably start making the icings to decorate. The uh, American buttercream slash grease cream and the royal icing. Okay, so before we start making some of the icings, I want to do one quick little trick. Um, I got these plunger cutters from... I got these plunger cutters from Franz Cake and Candy, and they're snowflakes, and I want to give them a try. Um, and what they're used for, or used with, rather, is um, gum paste. So we can do fondant or gum paste decorations on top of our cookies or cakes if we wanted to. So the first thing you want to do is you want to take some fondant, and you want to knead it a little bit to soften it up. Then take some just plain uh, shortening, plain shortening, and just kind of put a very light, thin layer on your final placemat. Then taking your plastic rubber, uh, rolling pin, roll it out. And you want to roll it to the point where you can almost see through it. Okay, let's pick it up so we can, we know it's able to release. And I'm going to do a couple big ones and then a couple small ones. I don't want to do any more than that. Now obviously when you're doing your cookies, you're going to pick one style um, before I finish that thought. Um, so once you push down and kind of, you know, wiggle it around with your cookie cutter, push down on the plunger really hard to leave the imprint, and then lift up, lift up at the plunger, still down, and then you can, hopefully it'll pop right out. And then we should get a pretty cool looking snowflake. Okay, so I'm gonna make a couple more of these and then I'm gonna put them on my, uh, I'm gonna let them dry just like this. So that way they um, get nice and hard so that way we can move them around without having to worry about them breaking apart. But I just thought that'd be something interesting to show you the different techniques that you can use to decorate cookies. Now, like I was saying earlier, obviously you want to just stick to one style so that way you're not doing a hundred different kinds of cookies and need all these decorations and all these icings that I'm going to have to use because it's kind of 
uh, inconvenient in a way. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and finish this and we're going to go ahead and start making the icings. Okay, so I forgot to mention some important points about that uh, using the plunger. First, you want to make sure that you put some light powdered sugar onto whatever surface you're going to put it on so that way it doesn't stick later. That's pretty important, so I'm sorry I forgot about that. Also, to help get these plungers, or help the gum paste to release in the plungers better, you can also use gum, uh, powdered sugar to dust them. So, what you want to do is you want to push down really hard, wiggle it around, push really hard on the plunger, carefully lift up, and then it should pop right out. You know, it's really funny, every time I have the camera running, my snowflakes come out really ugly. One more time. There we go, and so it should pop right out. And hopefully you get to see that. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and finish cutting out the snowflakes. They actually came out really nice, especially this, the little ones look really nice. But anyway, I'm gonna finish cutting the snowflakes out and then we can go ahead and make our icing. Okay, so first we're gonna start with the royal icing. Um, so I have three separated egg whites in this bowl. I'm gonna add just a touch of cream of tartar. That's gonna. And to those three egg whites, I'm gonna add half of the powdered sugar I have here. This is one pound, so I'm adding eight ounces. Okay, we're going to mix until it's moistened. Okay. Scrape down the sides. Remember that alternatively, if you don't want to use egg whites, you can use meringue powder. Just make sure you read what the equivalence of you know, the number of egg whites are, or ask, um, ask the retailer. Like I said, a specialty bakery shop. Okay, and then add the rest of your powdered sugar. And mix on slow, on low again. Okay, scrape the, bowl, uh, scrape the sides of the bowl again. Make sure we get all that powdered sugar incorporated. And then if we need to, we can add powdered sugar to help get the consistency we're looking for. If we want a, a thicker, drier royal icing, we would add more um, powdered sugar. As it is, it's really, really soupy, so we really couldn't use this for anything, even for, flood, for flooding cookies. It's a, a little bit too loose, I think. Okay, so I may have forgotten to mention that you want to make sure that you sift your powdered sugar. You don't want to have any lumps. So we're just going to add a couple spoonfuls of sifted powdered sugar to this to help thicken it up. Let's go ahead and just put, mm, go a little bit high. And go ahead and incorporate that in and see where we get. Okay, so I had a, a pretty good amount of, of powdered sugar beyond what the recipe called for. I would probably guess it's probably about a half a cup more. Um, and it's still a little soft, so we'll have to see if I need to add more powdered sugar. But it's pretty, 
it's pretty stiff right now. So we're pretty good to go and start coloring it. Okay, so we're going to need to do white, red, pink, and blue. Um, and we'll need the least amount of red, then blue, then pink, and then we need the most of white. Since the, the snowflakes on the hearts are going to have whites, and only the snowflakes are going to have the blue, and the hearts are going to have a little bit of red, and the hearts are also going to have a lot of pink. Okay, and the thing you want to remember about um, da -da 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 -da, royal icing is that it dries out pretty quickly. So when you're not using it, you want to cover it up with a damp paper cloth or paper towel. All right, so let's go ahead and color our icings. So let's start with the blue, since we don't need as much blue. Remember, we want a very light, light blue. So let's start with a little bit at a time. Okay, so before we start icing our cookies with the royal icing, let's go over how our cookies came out. So then here's the basic style cookies. Here's the hard and the snowflakes. Um, here's the ones that we're going to use. This one got a little crispy. Here's ones we're going to use for our... our uh, jam sandwich cookies and here are some of our window glass ones or window pane or stained glass um, some of them came out better than others that's why you always do a bunch of them and I just it's just a fun neat effect so you can see like right through it some of the colors like the grape I noticed got kind of almost brown looking so it's kind of ugh. so I'll have to remember that and here is the lollipop ones the uh, cookie pops I even did one with the stained glass look. Very easy. And the little ones, these are just really cute little ones that I'm probably just going to eat. Okay, so, oh, I really like the snowflakes actually. The blue came out really pretty. Like, here's a little one. And then these two I did a little bit bigger. I really like this one and this one because just because they take up more space and they just look really a lot more interesting. Like, a de almost, decora almost like a decoration. So, anyway. Let's go ahead and start icing um, some of the, let's do some of the snowflakes with the uh, royal icing. Okay, so the first thing you want to do for most of your royal icing cookies, if you're going to choose to do them this way, is what we're going to do is we're going to draw an outline of the cookie, and then what we're going to do is we're going to, do, um, we're going to flood it with the blue icing. And then after we flood it, we're going to let it dry, and then we're going to pipe on top of the flood. So it's a little bit of a time-consuming process, but royal icing cookies kind of have a more elegant look to them than the um, buttercream cookies. Okay, so that's pretty much the border. I don't know if I mentioned that I'm using a Wilton 3 tip. So we're going to let this dry. And the borders dry a lot faster than the floods. So basically once we finish with all our piping of the outlines with the royal icing, we're going to get to be able to flood them. Now if you want on some of the smaller cookies, you can just go ahead and pipe right on top of it.
So what I'm trying to do, or attempting to do anyway, is I'm trying to draw um, three lines first, and then I try to draw V at each line to help give it a snowflake. And just like the heart, or just like the snowflake cookie, you want to go ahead and outline it. I don't know if you can tell, but I, I, when I'm piping, I'm not piping directly onto the cookie. I actually have my, my bag lifted a little bit, almost like a centimeter off of the uh, cookie as I'm piping, and that helps make this line smoother and straighter. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and finish piping the outlines and piping the decorations on some of these cookies, and when we come back, we're going to start flooding the cookies. Okay, so now we're going to flood our cookies with some thinned royal icing. And all you have to do to thin out your royal icing is add a few drops of water at a time, stir it, and see where you're at. Your icing should be around here. As you notice, it's kind of like, almost like um, a pat -a bomb or it's like when you, as it drizzles back in, it holds its shape for a second, and then it kind of just goes back into the royal icing. You don't want it too much thin thinner than that, though, and this actually might be a little bit too thin. So we're going to try it out and make sure and see how it works. Okay, so put a little bit of a blob on and then using a toothpick or a tool, push it into the areas that you want it to go in. This is a time-consuming uh, process, but it gives you a neat effect. Okay, and that's pretty much how you flood a royal icing cookie. And the technique is pretty much the same. It's just actually a little bit more difficult for snowflakes because it has nooks and crannies. For a heart, it's a little bit easier because it's such a wide open space. But you definitely want to still use a toothpick or like I'm using a chopstick or whatever you have available to you to help you push and navigate around the cookie. Now at this point, if you wanted to add some sprinkles, you could. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and add some. And those are just regular um, sprinkles. Now if you want, uh, you can also, what you can do is you can buy medium grain sugar. And to color it, you can just use regular gel food coloring and just rub it between your hands back and forth. And that's an easy way to get whatever food coloring sprinkles you need if you don't have any. Remember, you need to use medium grain sugar. You can't use the granulated sugar you use in recipes, for example. And you can also use something called glitter. Let me flood another cookie so I can show you what that looks like. And so this is called edible glitter, and some uh, bake shops and some grocery stores use it. And if you work with uh, gum paste flowers, basically what it is is it's the gum paste glue that's been dried, and then it's been um, scraped up and then turned into little flakes. So that's a one way to make your own edible glitter. Okay, and that's kind of how it looks. It has kind of a more shiny look than the granulated or the medium grain sugar sprinkles. However, you want, whatever you want to use, you are you're happy with. Feel free to use. So I'm going to go ahead and flood my cookies, and that includes my heart cookies. I'm not going to show you how to flood those because it's pretty much the exact same process. And then when we come back, I'll either be piping on top of the snowflakes, or piping on the hearts, or working on the American buttercream. Depends on how far along I get and how dry the cookies are. Remember when you flood a cookie, you really want it to be really, really dry. So you want to give it a good hour or two before you pipe on top of it. Yeah, an hour or two, I'm serious. So these cookies are definitely time consuming. So once we get to the, grease, or the American buttercream, you might want to stick with that. But 
These do have a really nice finished look to them. They look really professional when they're finished. So let's go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and finish my cookies. Okay, to do something called um, scroll work, it's just basically a fancy name for a certain kind of piping. It's a little bit more elaborate, it's almost like a lace. Um, it's not really, like you wouldn't say scroll work if you were piping words, for example. Uh, I'm not super great at scroll work, so I'm just going to show you, and then afterward I'm going to describe it. So, just kind of just pay attention to how I do it. I'm using a number two uh, piping, Wilton piping tip, by the way. So notice where I'm starting and stopping with each curly cue. Okay, so that's the border. The border is usually a little bit easier than the inside pieces because then for me I kind of just kind of just go randomly and try to do something that looks nice. Um, I don't really know what other pastry chefs do at the time, um, but see if you can find if you like Google royal icing templates or lace, I roll icing lace templates online or patterns, you might be able to find something that you can use to study off of. Okay, and that's 
kind of what scroll work is. Now, if you were doing a cake, you would do an outline like this, and then you would go over it with a star border to really make it pop. It's not really necessary in a cookie, especially with this, you know, delicate design. It's like um, small design, so you don't really want to go to that extreme because then it might start looking a little bulky and you might start losing the shape. So this actually came out pretty good. As you can see, I kind of just did random shapes. The outline I did in a specific pattern. Um, I did one like this and then the other one like that. And I'll try to do my best to try and get a pattern online in my downloadable section so that way at least you guys have an idea of where I was going with it. Okay, so here is one of our um, window or stained window glass or window pane cookies. I did it with a uh, pearl border, and then I did a, I flooded it with white icing. And I'm going to show you a different kind of um, scroll work that you can do. It's just a really with random design, however you really want to go. And that kind of gives you a different kind of effect. And I actually like this. It's actually really quick to do. Um, some chefs, what they do is they just squeeze the bag as hard as they can, and then it just comes out all crazy anyway, and they just let it where it lies. Of course, they've had a lot of practice, and they kind of know, they kind of can feel where their bag is, so they can have experience with that. But it's just a different kind of scroll work that you can do that's a little less sophisticated or a little less ornate, so that way you don't have, well, not ornate, because it's still kind of ornate, but it's a little less tedious as the other one was. So you don't have to think as hard, so you can pipe this one a lot faster than the other style. So the other thing you can do is you can make conversation, conversation hearts, of course. Um, a lot of pastry chefs actually don't like conversation hearts, but you know, this is a great chance for you to learn how to um, pipe letters and to work on your cursive. So um, let's see. I'm just going to pipe the word love, I guess. So notice how I'm holding my piping tip away from the top of the cookie. But when I was doing sharper corners, I kind of came close to it to kind of make that, that um, to make it neat, for example, is a way of saying it. And if you want to do like little hearts, just pipe, a sh just pipe like a little pearl border. Of course, this is starting to look a little junior, but you know, it's a holiday. It's just for fun. Okay, so for the cookies that you're going to be making the sandwich cookies with, with the windows or the holes cut in it with nothing in it, um, what you want to do is you want to coat it heavily with powdered sugar, especially if it's a little dark. This will help cover up any like quasi-burned areas. Okay, and then for the jam bottoms, you want to put your jam in a pastry bag and then squeeze just a little bit. You don't need a whole lot to make your sandwich. Remember that you want to use a raspberry filling or a strawberry filling or whatever, um, but more importantly, that it doesn't need to be refrigerated since your cookies are going to sit out. Because if they get refrigerated, they're going to get soft and squishy. So you want to find a shelf-stable raspberry filling or fruit filling. So in other words, you don't want to use the jelly that you would use in your peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Okay, so the next thing you want to do is you want to kind of smooth it out with your offset spatula. Now that you're holding your finger right here. And 
And then lastly, you just put your little heart on top. You want to try and find one that fits pretty well to the other heart. And that's pretty much it. Same thing with the small ones. You just do the exact same steps. And that's how you make your sandwich cookies with the window filling. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and move on to the American buttercream. So I've got, uh, let's see, nine and a half ounces of powdered sugar, two ounces of shortening, two ounces of butter, and a little bit of vanilla extract. Didn't really weigh it on, just splashed it on in. And what we're going to do is we're going to try and, we're going to try and create enough buttercream because I don't have a whole lot of cookies up to ice. I uh, made most of them with royal icing because I made a lot more royal icing than I intended to. So remember that you might need to double or triple this recipe depending on if you want to use only American buttercream. And I'll have those measurements already weighed out for you in the recipe online on my website. So all you have to do is combine all the ingredients together and mix them together. Remember that if you use more butter, the icing will be softer, but it will have a better flavor. If you use more shortening, you'll have a better control over the consistency using water, but it might not have as great of a flavor. So you kind of have to go back and forth. So using half and half, we get a little bit of both worlds. Okay, so I went ahead and doubled the recipe because I realized that the well, for the uh, small batch or the regular batch, the one batch, doesn't make nearly enough of what we need. So I went ahead and doubled it. So we're going to go ahead and mix that in. Now, if you can see, because we use butter in this icing as opposed to just white shortening, unflavored shortening, the icing has kind of an off yellow color to it, and that's just the reality of the butter adding its color to the icing. So if you want a really white icing, a white, white icing, you have to only use shortening, and you have to only use the uncolored, unflavored shortening. So the advantage to American buttercream to royal icing is one, flavor, and two is the ease of icing the cookies, especially if you're good with using a palette knife or an offset spatula. So put some icing on the cookie. And then you're just kind of smoothing it around. Until you get the shape that you're looking for. Okay, now unlike um, icing with royal icing, you're not going to get a perfectly flat, smooth cookie. You're going to have some texture to your cookies, which is a plus or a minus depending on how you like your cookies. Um, but like I said, flavor is an advantage and it's easier to make this icing, it's easier to work with, it's quicker. You can really ice on a lot of these cookies really quickly. So. What you can also do is um, you can pipe with this icing using a star tip. Now you can do that with the royal icing too if it's a little bit stiffer and there's a lot more of it, but it, that's not really the whole reason you use royal icing. If you're going to make a, sh a shell border, you really want to use American buttercream or a buttercream. So well, I'm going I'm to color some of the icing pink and then we're going to put a border around it.
Okay, and there's two main shell borders that I like to put on these cookies. I'm using an 822 star tip. You might want to use a smaller one, 821 or 820. And the uh, one, one shell border is just the regular shell border. where you're kind of making a sideways J. You're going out, up, and then back. So you're kind of starting with the C and then pulling backward. Then the other one, which is the one I like to do on cookies because it's a lot quicker, is the reverse shell border where you actually are kind of like doing it on its side. The icing's a little bit stiff, which is why the shell is not coming out super nice, but hopefully you're getting the idea of where we're going with this. So I like I usually like this one a little bit better because it has kind of more of a, a rosy look to it. Okay, so I've softened my icing and I switched to an 821 star tip. I'm going to try again with the uh, reverse shell border. Okay, and that looks a little bit nicer. Now there's one other um, shell border thing or a shell technique that you can do and it's called a fertilise. Let me ice a cookie real quick. Okay, so fertilise, you do two reverse shells and then a regular shell. So you do a reverse shell here, a reverse shell here, and then a regular shell on top. And that's a fertilise. Not the best fertilise, but that's an example of a fertilise. And then you can finish off with a small shell border around the edge. If you want to, you might want to make it a little bit smaller. But that's just another example of, a cook of the cookies you can do. Now, of course, you can do any of the other designs. You can do any of the um, calligraphy. You can do the window pane cookies. You can do... Um, bead borders if you use a straight tip. Um, you can do any of the other styles we did with the royal icing with the buttercream icing. Just know that it's not going to come out as, I don't want to say it's professional looking because these have more of a home style look to them, but they won't come out as um, ornate looking. Um, you may have a little bit of issues with the piping. Uh, royal icing just tends to flow a little bit better than buttercream icing. But that's not to say that you can't do those designs like the uh, scroll work with buttercream. Okay, so let's go ahead and recap the cookies that we made. So here we have our American buttercream on our cookies. We made them with the, these were for the reverse shell border, but remember you can also make them with the regular shell border. And you can also make use the American buttercream to make any of the cookie designs that you see after this point. Um, it's just a matter of using the right consistency and having the, the icing where you want it to be. Remember that the American buttercream had half butter and half shortening and a lot of powdered sugar basically and a little bit of vanilla extract. And um, it's iced by hand using a spatula and then piped with a star tip. Okay, so here are some of our window pane cookies. Remember these were made with a Jolly Rancher pieces that were crushed up. We baked them in the oven just like normal um, without any special treatment or, what, treatment or anything like that. We didn't change the temperature, just regular time, uh, temperature. As you can see, some of them have scroll work. These are all raw icing, by the way. Some of them have the scroll work. Some of them have the bead border. I have some dragées here. And remember that the dragées um, technically aren't really um, edible. The metal um, coating they put on the outside isn't edible, but it is a sugar bead. And these are the same dragées, at least mine are, the same dragées they've been making for years. So it's not like it's anything weird. So I don't have any problem eating them. But just so you know that dragées are not really considered food safe. 
And then, you know, as as also we outlined them with the roll icing and then we flooded them with a thinned out roll icing. Okay, we also made um, cookie pops. Um, one of these um, is a uh, window pane or a, a stained glass window cookie as well. They both have scroll work and they are both done the same way with border and then flooded. They're both for all icing. Remember that when you do the cookie pops that we actually use two cookies and sandwich them together and when we, when we bake them with the popsicle stick sitting in the middle, sitting in the middle so it holds it together. Okay, and we also have our sandwich um, hearts where we baked each layer separately. We poked one with or cut one out with a hole in the middle. The other one was just a plain cookie. And then we baked them individually. And then when we took them out of the oven, we put powdered sugar on the ones that had the cutout and the ones that didn't have the cutout, we just spread the icing on with a, uh, on offset spatula and then we squished them together. Remember that the Raspberry filling that I used is shelf stable, so it doesn't need to be refrigerated. So you really can't use, you know, like smuckers or anything like that that needs to be refrigerated. You need to make sure that you use a filling that is non refrigerated it doesn't need to be refrigerated. Okay, and so we also made snowflake cookies, at least I made snowflake cookies as well, using the same techniques. Um, the we have the stained glass window or window pane cookies where we had to cut out and we put the Jolly Ranchers in. And these were all made with royal icing, so they had the border and then we were flooded. Um, here's some with dragées. These three were unique because we made this um, with the uh, snowflake on top with fondant. And, um, and then we put that onto the cookie afterward. You can glue it on with some royal icing, like a little dot of royal icing, or you can put it on um, right after you flood it and it's still a little soft. But I think I recommend doing it with a little dot of icing when the icing, when the flood is um, dry because the snowflake is delicate and you don't want it to sink into the icing. We also have ones that we didn't, um, that we didn't end up flooding. We just kept it plain. This part of a very simple design. And this is, this one's actually one of my favorites with the cutout and the flooding and the dry So it looks very nice. So these were our snowflake cookies. Oh, and these blue ones, the one in the middle is an M&M actually. So I just thought it'd be a, ne a neat way to incorporate an M&M. And these are basically dragées too. They're technically called sugar pearls, but they're basically just blue dragées. Okay, so that's how you make um, sugar cookies and decorations for cookies. And that's just some examples, of course. You know, obviously this is not in any way, shape, or form all encompassing. These are just some ideas and hopefully they can inspire you to do something special for Valentine's Day or for any time when you're making cookies. Um, we, we did the royal icing cookies, we did American buttercream cookies, and we did sandwich cookies this time around. Um, now keep in mind that royal icing cookies are going to be able to be packaged a lot better, or a lot easier I should say, than the American buttercream cookies. And that's because royal icing, it gets really, really hard really fast. And so it, it's almost it's scratch resistant and it can be stacked on top of each other. American buttercream stays soft for a longer period of time. So it has a better mouthfeel. It tastes more like icing than it does like candy because I, I feel like royal icing tastes more like candy. But um, buttercream is going to stay softer and moister so it tastes better. But it's also susceptible to being squished and, you know, fingerprints. So try to be careful when you're packaging it. If you're putting it in a tray, make sure you put them on top. Um, now, American buttercream eventually should get harder, but it's after a couple days of being left out. And at that point, your cookie might get stale too. So just keep that in mind of all those little, um, in, uh, little tips and tricks with the cookies. You know, you want, if you're going to package them for individual use, you really want to do... Um, the royal icing. Now if you put one American buttercream cookie in here it should be okay but remember the bag itself can squish on the icing too. So if you're doing a platter at home then it might be better to use American buttercream. There's different um, pros and cons to each um, style of icing and you can see all those tips and tricks and the pros and cons. I have it all outlined in my blog on uh, www.theaubergineschef.com. I'll also have pictures, close-up pictures of all the cookies that I've made so that way you can see what I did um, with each style and how I use the piping since I only did a very general overview. Um, I didn't feel like boring you with every single cookie. Um, keep in mind that this does take a long time to do, especially the royal icing cookies. Um, now if you want to, you can thin out your royal icing even more so when you flood it, it um, fills it up a little bit faster. But just keep in mind that it will take longer to dry and it can get messy if you're not very careful. 
So I like to use the chopstick method because it dries a lot faster and it's a little bit more uh, careful, I should say. It's harder to be messy with that style. You just got to be prepared. So you know, you're going to spend a, a few hours making that. Now, granted, you don't want to make every single cookie in this episode because that's going to take you more than half a day. Like, it, it took me forever to get these cookies finished. But that's because I did a lot of different styles. If you stick with one style with one icing, you won't have any problem. So anyway, don't forget to visit my blog to see the rest of those tips and tricks and close-up pictures. Uh, I hope you learned a lot today. And remember, the aubergine chef, demystifying dessert, one recipe at a time.